it's Ali with Seattle Coffee Gear, and today we're here for a crew comparison. We are comparing the new Minion XL, which is this one over here, versus the Specialita from the same line. So overall, you can tell these look pretty much exactly the same. The XL has a little bit of a lift to it, um, just a little bit bigger. The specs are going to be a bit different. The Specialita has 55 millimeter, sorry, flat steel burrs and the XL has 65 millimeter diamond inside burrs. So that's probably the biggest difference between these two just to start. Um, the XL is part of the Oro line, the new line from Eureka, kind of adding like a premium and a bunch of those features from all of their grinders into one. Basically just trying to make this like the ultimate home grinder, if you will. So those diamond inside burrs are gonna mean that the edges stay sharper for longer, um, and they're gonna be a little bit harder as well. So that in addition with the burrs being larger overall, you're gonna get more consistent grounds for a longer period of time, um, and we'll show you some of those in a minute. 55 millimeter burrs on this are still pretty good. Um, the grind quality will be tough to determine whenever we show you those, but just keep that in mind. Both have the same touch screen with a double, single, and a manual dose here. They both have that um, locking feature that you can turn on or off. If you touch those and they disappear, your doses are locked. Cannot adjust them. Just touch them again and now you can. Yeah. So that's gonna be the same. The adjustment knob is a little bit different on both two. You'll notice on the XL, you can see the numbers front facing. So if you are dialing this in, it's a little bit easier to see without having to peek your head on over like you see on the Specialita. Now, the numbers are something that probably won't make or break your decision. It's more that it's a um, easier thing for you to do to see like how much of an adjustment you're making. Both are infinite adjustments. So they have a very wide range of what they can do they both turn multiple times, multiple revolutions for that. So if you're getting used to your grinder, you probably won't really need to even see the numbers to determine how much of an adjustment you're making. You can really do it by feel or how much once you get to know your grinder, but the numbers are helpful when you're first getting started. Um, if you're trying to be a little bit more precise, but just remember they don't mean anything as far as what the adjustment is, just like some helpful measurement or adjustment uh, references for you. They both have this adjustable portafilter fork. It does come off too, so it can be replaced if you so need to do that or if you wish. Um, while they both are adjustable, so you can fit many styles and types of portafilters in them, the XL adds on an extra little feature here with the padding at the top. So this reduces a little bit of the movement that's possible with just the metal top. I'll show you here in a second once I put that back. So they both will hold the portafilter in place like so. This one actually probably can be adjusted a little bit tighter too to get closer to a fit like this one, but it does hold it in place just a little bit better. Metal against uh, like an abrasive surface or something with a little bit more grip to it is always going to hold up a little better than metal against metal. Not bad. I don't know if you'd be able to tell in your day-to-day -day use but just another little feature they thought up. Yeah, I mean, like we said, most of the features are gonna be the same. Let's test out some sound and um, what that grinding is like. So we'll start on the special eater here. Ooh, probably would be better if I did a dosed amount. Get an idea for that one. These do grind in a little bit different times as well, so the dose time will be a bit different. The XL here has a little bit stronger of a motor, so it can dose a little bit quicker, um, well, a little bit longer on the Specialita. Specialita can be, I think you can grind a double shot within like seven and a half to eight and a half seconds, usually, give or take what coffee you're using, all of that good stuff. And the, uh, I'm sorry, the XL here, I had mine dialed in at home at around six and a half to seven seconds for my double shot, um, but you're gonna always have that range as well. So 
So a little bit of a sound difference there. I don't know if you noticed the tone. I'm going to go back and do them side by side without me talking. So just a little bit different there. Not too much as far as I don't know if that would make or break your decision either, but just for you to compare. Yeah, so let's go ahead and bring out the grind sizes here. Had to make sure I got these not mixed up, but I know this one is the XL and this one is the Special Leah. So none of these grinds are exact. They don't really represent anything exactly. I just kind of um, went throughout, did a couple adjustments, did my best to pick a few selections that I thought would be good for you to see. So why don't we start with the Special Leah? When I pulled it off the shelf from what it was dialed in before, the grind setting what or what it was dialed into was this setting here. So it had a little bit of clumping. Anytime you go finer on these, you'll have a little bit of that. Um, but still great grind consistency throughout. Um, definitely nice, even, fluffy. A little bit coarser, not very much. Um, I just wanted to try and see if any little adjustment was made, if it would make a big difference. Um, obviously this is going to be really hard for you to see on camera unless we got super close in. So to the eye, I don't see any real visible difference as far as the grind size and consistency wise. Moving over to a little bit less fine, this is more like the AeroPress grind, which I did a similar one there. Still pretty consistent throughout, no chunks. Maybe when you get towards like the bottom of the pile, I see a few little fines here and there. This is a pour over or drip grind here. A little bit more chunks throughout in this one. You can definitely start to see some of the differences there, the differences in grind size. And then this is more coarse. And this is where it does start to get pretty chunky throughout. Um, definitely meant to be more in those fine areas for sure but not too bad, just not really intended for use on those coarser. So keep that in mind. Overall, you're gonna have a pretty consistent grinder for this one, but you jump up to the 65 and the quality of the grind does jump as well. So this was the finer side here, probably some of the finer ones I, can, I could have made. Just tried to get as close to what we had here as possible too. So this is where I tried to make it kind of clump up a little bit, similar to what I saw there. It didn't do it as easily, and I feel like, let's see. Overall, this is a little bit finer, I find, whenever I started to see it clump. So just something to keep in mind there. This is more like your, your normal espresso grind here, and really I have no complaints. Super consistent, I can't really see anything that's not, which is impressive. Really nice burrs. When we go to some of the coarser ones, this is still, this was the AeroPress grind I was talking about. I was going to say it's close to espresso, not quite, and that's how I grind my AeroPress. I like it pretty fine, but not as fine as espresso. So very consistent throughout, no visible chunks there. Moving on to a more pour over style grind or drip grind. It's still, I'm really impressed on how well this keeps consistency throughout, even towards these coarser ranges. Because as we talked about, you start to get some chunks here on the coarser like pour over grinds, not so much here. If you can see this where I just kind of brush my finger across, I mean, that's really nice. It's hard to get that. Here is the one of the, oops, one of the more coarse options I was able to do. And now we start to see those chunks, right? So all of these, or both of these, excuse me, are meant to be for espresso. So that's really where they shine. Just wanted to show you kind of the range and what they are capable of doing throughout so you can get a better comparison of the two. So one other thing I wanted to talk about was the retention in these, cause that is a little different. And usually when you're looking at the minion models or this is some, uh, a reason why people look at the minion models is for how much retention they have. Wanted to kind of compare for you, bigger burrs is always going to mean more retention, but whenever you're choosing a grinder, let's talk about how much of a difference that makes. I count retention, or the way I measure it, just for our purposes, is 
closing this hopper shoot right here. So whatever's beneath, that's what's getting ground into my retention shot. And same with this one, whatever's beneath gets ground. Really, when you're talking about retention and what it is, it's going to be how much actual ground coffee is left in those burrs, but it's hard to measure that exactly. So this is how much is going to be left with the burrs and underneath. So let me get to a manual grind here. Um, hopper shut, just gonna grind until all the beans are out. Try not to make a mess here. Cool. Just wanted to make sure there's no dust left over. Not bad, that's probably about a shot's worth. 13.2, a little bit less than a shot's worth. This is the same coffee too, so the weight should be equivalent. Do the same thing here, let me move to manual. Perfect. So you can already see visibly, it's gonna be a bit more. 16, about three more grams of retention. Up to you if that makes a big difference or not. It's what you trade off for burr size versus retention. Yeah, I think that's about everything that we can cover on these. Same hopper size, same footprint for the most part. You probably are gonna be good with the specialty if you're really tight on space constraints um, or if you're just looking for something that's really solid, not over the top. If you're interested in probably one of the best ones you can get for your buck, the XL really does pack a lot of features in for the price difference. So really up to you. I think either one will serve you really well. Um, if you have any questions about the grinders, just place them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Oh, yes.